So in the last video, we've made a second gear with another method, and this one, of course, was made with a equation-driven curve that would theoretically perfectly create a beautiful, perfect, flawless involute profile. Then we've made another gear. And this was used This was created with approximation points, and then we ran a spline from point to point to approximate what the involute curve would look like. Since splines aren't perfect, it's not designed to be involute particularly, there's a little bit of guesswork between every point with the spline. And so people have said that this is not a legitimate way to make a realistic gear. So let's take a look at uh, if that's a true claim or not, at least in the particular case of how I've made these two gears. The first thing I'll do, and I probably should fast forward through this, but just so you can see my methods on making this, I'm going to snap a line right there in the middle of our tooth profile. And I can center this up with some center lines. We'll say collinear and equal. And then we'll say perpendicular. Whoops. I guess me every time when I do these uh, kind of angled rectangles, let's go with how about four by one, something like that, right? So this face is aligned with a certain orientation of this tooth. And that means that we can constrain the gear in a way that one is centered inside of another. So we'll do a cut through all and save. Let's do the same thing here. So I'm going to take the features that made this gear kind of pretty and suppress them. We'll create a sketch on this face. We can center this up. We'll say again, collinear and equal. We'll draw a center line from there to there. Again, that uh, horizontal dimension got me. So, features, extruded cut, through all. All right. Now we can insert part. Next, we want to move body from here to here. That way, we want to move this body from here to here. We want to make sure that we are cocentric. And then we can align these faces. <laughs> and there you can see one gear is a different length than the other one. And so let's clean that up real quick to make things a little bit more clear and easy. Let's go with direct editing, move face. We'll translate a distance of one, and we probably have to go in the other direction. There we go, one. Okay. 
I'll make the other body visible. So as you can see, it's almost like the same gear. You can hardly tell that there's a gear in a gear in there. Let's do a combine. And we're going to do a subtract operation where we subtract this body from this body. And that should leave us with the amount of differences between the two bodies. And we can take a thickness analysis to see exactly what the dimensions different they are. So there you can see we have the remaining parts of the bodies where they don't line up. Let's take one of these. We'll say features, evaluate, and thickness analysis. And here I have 0 0.00001. <laughs> And uh, the thick region limit is as low as it'll go. So we're going to go full color range with keep transparency. Uh, we'll show the thick regions and treat corners as zero thickness. Those settings look great. Let's calculate the thickness of this remnant. So this isn't even registering as having a thickness. The difference is so small. I'm not even getting a color scale on this. Let's try this on one of the other elements. We'll run this one. Same thing. Looks like everywhere that I point to, we're not even able to measure a thickness. But perhaps it's different if I change the order of the cut. So if I run back to the tree, go back to my combine, we can see that our approximated was the main body. So let's delete that and make move face the main body and approximated the body to cut. So we'll keep all bodies here. Looks like there's more of a significant difference with this result. Let's go to features, actually evaluate and analyze the thickness here. Again, this whole thing is registering as having no thickness as far as we're able to measure. All right, so let's try a different way of comparing. We're going to delete everything so when we want to compare this part, one obstacle that we're going to have is the coordinate system because these teeth don't line up, but we've created some features that can help us align them. So let's work on a coordinate system that will help us accomplish our goal. First thing I'll do is start a new coordinate system. So I'll choose So I'll choose uh, my coordinate system where my x-axis will be along this line. And actually that looks like it snapped to just the right spot. So I'll accept that. All right, so there's my new coordinate system to where my y is still vertical and my z is going this way, but my x-axis is adjusted to align with the teeth of the gear. Likewise, let's do the same thing here, where I want my x-axis to be along that line. You can tell we're going right through the middle of that tooth, so we should be good there. Let's save. And then tools, compare, we'll compare geometry. So we've got these two gears and we want to align 
with our coordinate systems, not with our global coordinate system, so that the teeth will line up. So we're going to run our comparisons. All right, so we care about a uh, face comparison, and it looks like in terms of unchanged faces, we have one. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's this face, but this gray color kind of makes it hard because <laughs> the part is gray. But I think it's this face. Um, in terms of unique faces, looks like this face back here is unique, whereas this one is not. So I don't know if that was, oh, because of the length, right? For, I, I didn't uh, move the face out an inch like I did in the last video. So that's why that face is unique. Other than that, we just have itty bitty changes in the uh, profile. Right, so a little bit of modified faces, but as as you can tell, our thickness analysis, our geometry compare these these things seem to be quite um, nominal. I I so I'm not seeing any evidence that these gears are going to be substantially different unless you're running tolerances that are down in the hundred thousandths of an inch because machines aren't going to be able to hit the differences between these two gears. So uh, that's why I say that I would probably feel comfortable using the approximated method if I didn't have access to something that could model the equation-driven curve the way that we did in the first video. One other thing that's worth mentioning is uh, I think we've got some good evidence out of this video. I would say what I've done, though, is somewhat unscientific as I've tested one gear. Uh, so you may want to, if you have the ability to, test gears that are say 10 teeth and 35 teeth and you know a wide variety of these things so that you can get a good idea as to if gear size and other parameters make a huge difference to the profile test different pressure angles tests different um, moduluses or diametral pitches uh, but i think the evidence here would show that i think most applications are probably pretty safe with this profile Nonetheless, there may need to be some more detail on this. Uh, in the next video, maybe we'll cover some practical applications of designing gears to go into uh, things. So, hope this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.